listening to Fretcast. Killer office that we can see in the background. He's got good lighting because he's got a natural window in front of him. I know this because every once in a while we see cars drive past. We can see the shadows, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see the the cute neighbor girls that go running by. Oh, I know. I, I bet see you those. Got the perfect spot. Yeah, yeah. We know how you are, man. <laughs> so we've got the great shot inside of. Uh... Mm, oh, mm. oh, look at that. Look at what that. What is going on he's, there? Me hungry. We got the great shot of Dan. Uh, Oh, you're hungry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're on the liquid <laughs> diet, you poor bastard. <laughs> Day four. Oh, my gosh. Oh, really? Yeah, really. That's I feel bad now. I'm over here making love to a Hot Pocket, and <laughs> you're on a liquid diet. Yeah. I'm going to be on it for three weeks. Oh, Dude, my goodness. Man. Now, can you do one of those? Uh, oh, of course, the other view is I was going through. We've got the Borg uh, skull cap on with Dan and shuttle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tidarius, or whatever you want to call it, your shuttle your shuttlecraft. <clears throat> and we finally got a view of Studio One, Trekcast Studio One. So that's what I'll call it. Until Fair someone not. tells me not to. So we're gonna put this up, right? I oh mean, yeah, yeah. I just started. You said I wasn't. Video. You said I wasn't gonna get it done, and now now you got it done. Oh, I got it done. Challenge has been made. That's right. And I'll I'll be reviewing this a little later in the show. Nice, nice. Look so. at that. You know, bigger I than my watching, phone. Uh, I was watching Star Trek Into Darkness last night because it was just on TNT or whatever. Why? I know. So <laughs> I was watching it, and the scene, the well, we got home from Captain Marvel like 11.30 at night, and I was wide awake, which that was a good movie, by the way. And uh, at any rate, it was on, so we're just kind of trying to wind down. I'm laying in bed watching it, and you get the scene where Kirk just whips out his communicator, calls Scotty, who's on Earth in a bar, and, of course, he's in Klingon space. And they just start having a chit-chat real time. Yep. What the f... Through your communicator? That's supposed to be, like, ground to ship, ship to ground, kind of. That's about... In, right? Like, that's not supposed to be interstellar, is it? It's a space cell phone now. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I guess I never really thought about that too much until I happened to watch it last night. And then, of course, I couldn't get to sleep because I was upset. So... Yeah. Oh. I saw uh, Shazam last night. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went to one of those uh, special two weeks before it comes out showings. Yeah, I was looking for a showing of that. There was one about an hour from where I live, but mm -hmm. uh, the, the time just wouldn't jive up. With Dude, it was so good. It was so yeah. good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah. It's just dumb fun. Oh, yeah. It looks like dumb fun, but hey, that's okay. It's perfect. Yeah. How is it? Uh, like, my son is six. My only concern is, I mean, I know there's violence in it. I know there's, like, superhero-type violence. My only concern is, is there blood? And is there anything sexual? There's no blood. There's nothing sexual. The uh, the seven deadly sins are very, very scary and creepy okay. looking. So that's my one hesitation for you. I don't know how sensitive he is to that stuff. But, mm -hmm. I mean, th those things they do not shy away from. They are complete horror elements. Oh, Right in the middle of a comedy, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. But it's, well, I mean, it's really well done. It's a, huh? I said I'm looking forward to watching that one. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. And of course, after watching Captain Marvel last night, I'm really looking forward to Endgame next month. Yeah. So. I, I hope I'm not having surgery then. I don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. We've got a Thursday night midnight showing planned. There's gonna be about five or six of us going. So. My daughter, her friend, and then uh, my brother-in-law, maybe his kids, I don't know, and then uh, maybe my brother. Who knows? We'll, we'll kind of see what we end up doing. Oh, so I'm in the movie theater, right? And the guy next to me gets in, and it's, you know, as it's starting, so it's already dark. And I have this giant water bottle. And uh, he looks at me and goes, dude, do you have a 40? <laughs> like, he legit thought that was a 40. <laughs> To which you say, I own, I'm on a liquid diet for my third day, so excuse my flatulence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no, I was just like, no, dude, it's just water. He's like, oh, okay. No beer for me this morning, so, by the way. Yeah. So you've never you've never snuck a 40 into a theater? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> okay. uh, I've never done that either. Have you, Dan? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a lie. 
It sounds the wor- like the worst it. part. The worst part is when you uh, when you accidentally knock over the empty with your foot, and you <laughs> have to listen and you have to listen to it roll all the way to the front of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look around like, where did that come from? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, who's doing the intro? Oh yeah, I guess it's my turn this time. If we're rotating, then it's my turn. Then next week it'll be you, Daniel. Oh God. Yep. That's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> hey, welcome to TrekCast TNG. I am your one of your hosts, Chad Waldo. As always with me today is Daniel Reyes and Dan Lombardo. We'll be talking about the Orville, which is finally back on after two weeks. And of course, we'll be off for another three weeks after this. So that's, you know, lovely. And of course, the latest disco, which, spoiler alert, uh, we had some big reveals because the title was Raid Angel and they didn't hold it back for the whole show. They showed it to us before the credits rolled. Gentlemen, how are we doing this morning? Good. Pretty Good. I'm, ex- I'm excited to talk about uh the orville <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, i've got some issues with the discovery right now oh man i got some issues i'll tell you what so it was a good show but hey we'll get to that later so i guess first off we're gonna go right into the news right yeah <clears throat> so uh first news story comes from space.com and the headline reads anson mount and rebecca romaine disembarking from star trek discovery report so uh yeah right shocker um (laughs) so anson mount and rebecca romaine are leaving the show after season two uh reportedly this is um this was expected it's nothing bad yeah you know it was they were both just signed on for a one-year commitment um i would say rebecca romaine looks like she was signed up for a hamburger um yeah pretty much yeah but you know We'll see if she shows back up later. Yeah, maybe the last scene or the last episode where he's going back to the Enterprise, maybe that's about it. Um, yeah. I didn't really expect much out of her character because this show takes place on Discovery, not the Enterprise, and she's, you know, second in command of the Enterprise. So why right. would she be? I didn't actually expect Pike to be as involved as he it turned out to be this season either. Mm. So I went and watched uh, Nymphomaniac, Neurotic, whatever his oh, name is. Oh, that guy? On yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Three days ago, he put, or four days ago now, he put up a video about how Disco is just in shambles. They can't keep their leads anymore. The only reason to watch the show, Anson Mount's leaving. What are they doing? I mean, what a dumbass. I mean, <laughs> just completely. What a, he is as bad as, as uh, reporters on the news, any of the major news network. I don't care which one you pick. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Shepard Smith's a dipshit. But anyway... So if you pick, if you pick any of those guys, right? This is what this guy's doing. He's taking whatever he can get and spinning it to his own narrative. He's as bad as the network news. He has a narrative and he wants to force it down everybody's throat, even when he sounds like a fucking moron. Pardon my language, but this is ridiculous. You, you need so, to stop hate watching this guy, man. I do hate you need watching some this love guy. in your life. Well, I, <laughs> I do. What I do when I'm on the road and I've got not a whole lot to do, or I'm watching an old episode, I'll go go troll through net, uh, YouTube for a little while, and then I'll start yeah. drinking. Then I gonna get mad. Then I listen to this guy, and then I just comment the shit up on. on no, this. no, no, no. <laughs> watch, watch some birds aren't real videos, man. Get woke. Oh, I should be doing that. I should yeah. be doing that. Oh, yeah. I, had one, uh, I had one queued up uh, this week, and then I didn't get time to. Hell, when I was in my hotel room one night this week, I wasn't. I didn't stop working until eleven thirty at night. Oh wow, it was ridiculous. So that's they're, how my week went. So they're actually working on a birds aren't real documentary right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. I What's watched really a uh, I watched a flat Earth flat Earther yeah. documentary on Oh Netflix nice. Recently. That's what's really fun is to go watch those. Oh my god. No shit. Out, of, out of their minds. There's a video of this guy saying, Look, I'm gonna take my helicopter and I'm gonna go straight up and I'm gonna hover at fifteen hundred feet and I'll never move. Even though the earth is rotating, I won't <laughs> move. That proves the earth is not rotating and it's flat, not round. Otherwise, after an hour of hovering, I'd be in a different position. <laughs> I just wanted to die laughing so hard. What an idiot. Oh, my God. (laughs) So bad. That's kind of like saying, I'm going to stand here, and if the Earth's really revolving, I should just be in China after a while without having to move. (laughs) It's like I jump, and I should move slightly when I land. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uh, Whatever. It's so bad, so bad. Anyway, those are fun to watch, those flat Earther ones. Oh, Yeah. yeah. All right. So the next news story comes to us from comicbook.com. Uh, Star Trek sees the Picard pilot director at work in a holodeck. 
sort of. So um, last week, uh, Hanel Culpepper, the uh, director of the Picard pilot, <clears throat> put out a tweet saying that she was working on sets for the new show, and it's her using VR goggles going through the sets. So it's kind of cool that she's doing that. And a lot of people are making fun of her because on the wall in the background, it kind of looks like the uh, Next Generation holodeck. Anyways, it's black with yellow uh, grids. But, it, huh. I mean, it's just a background of a wall, but it just happens to look like the holodeck. But, uh, yeah, so that's the big deal is that they're using uh, VR to create these sets, which is fairly common nowadays. Is it really? Yeah. Huh, that's the first I've heard of that. That's interesting. Well, you got to think, a lot of these sets are 3D and CGI, so it's easy to just dump them into a, a VR, and you can kind of look around. Hmm. So, yeah. And our last news story comes from entertainment.ie. Uh, this might be my favorite one, and I think we'll have to put it up in the group and, and get this going. The headline reads, There's now a petition to have a statue made of Chief O'Brien from Star Trek in Dublin. I'm down. I'm yeah. down with that. Yeah. So, if, uh, yeah. hey, if they could put RoboCop in Detroit, God yeah. damn it. Yeah. Miles O'Brien. Legit, that's the first sentence. <laughs> if they could put RoboCop in Detroit, <laughs> let's put Chief O'Brien in Dublin. That's pretty good. And it also that's talks about uh, Rocky Balboa, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, how could you not do that? I mean, come on. <clears throat> I mean, we already have Paddington Bear at Paddington Station in London. So, do no, we don't, but we should. I was gonna say, what <laughs> we, so, and then, you know, we owned it or we did it or something, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen any mock ups for the proposed statue, uh, but there is a link to the uh, signatures, you know, to, to sign for it. It's on ipetitions.com. Huh. Um, I, I think he should have a, a, a mug in one hand and a dart in the other, and just like posing like he's throwing the dart at court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're crawling around in Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> Not sure how that statue would work, but yeah, act no. You know what he should. You know what it should be. It should be a statue of him when he was trying to talk down that uh, holographic storm on Bajor. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Season one, like episode seven or something. I mean, it's like right into the. It's like the. He goes down to the planet. He becomes the. The speaker or whatever, where he's got to say this speech over and over again to get the. Whatever that thing. I don't know. It was a stupid episode. Hey, well, Chad, so you, you, got your, uh, you got your pad? You got your pen <laughs> your pad? No, I don't. But you're going to tell well, me there needs to be a nerd alert right there, Yeah, right? just drop one right in there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> drop it in. <laughs> so, so far, they've got a little over 600 signatures as of this recording. They're trying to get a thousand. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. I'm going to post this in the group. Hopefully, we can help get this done, you know, because we need this. I think. You know what's funny about that? If we can go <laughs> the and world needs sign it. that, but yeah, if we can go and sign that petition, and then they're going to actually listen to people who sign that petition, that means the entire world is going to tell the city of Dublin what to do. Exactly. <laughs> How you is know that what? any when different you, uh... from the internet telling anyone what to do? <laughs> well, I think we should give it the Trekcast bump. So when you put it up in the group, yeah, let everybody know if they sign this petition, mm -hmm. as they sign their name, they should put after it via Trekcast. And yes. we'll just see how many, uh, we could see how many, you know, how many names we get on there uh, from the Trek cast bump. There so you go. There you go. I'm going to put that in. I'm putting it in right now. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Do it, man. Yeah. This is Trek cast. We make things happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly in real time, but we kind of try, right? We try. <laughs> we try. I'm pulling up stuff for our feedback section here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm done with the news. I mean, this is pretty quick. So, hey, I know we're trying to stick to our format, but um, where where in the format does it go when we want to talk about last week's episode for a minute, when we discovered something else about last week's episode? What, like old business? Go for it. Yeah, yeah, old business. Yeah, we can do old business. We can do that whenever you want. Yeah, All right. so drop it on in. I come to find out, um, I want to call a Mir I want to call her Miriam. But I don't want Chad to yell at me. Right, so, right, Ari right, right. Arium. 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 I don't know if you guys realize, but the actress who played Arium changed from season one to season two. Yeah, I was aware Correct. of that. Oh, you were aware of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's why well, she looks, that's why Arium looks slightly different. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, I didn't know that, and I was surprised to find that out. And then I was even more surprised to find out that the actress mm-hmm. who played her in season one is still on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. She's the new lieutenant this week, isn't she's, she? Yeah, she's yep. the Lieutenant Nelson. Yep, who just shows like, up and they... And I think just goes right back to where she stood for season one. <laughs> right, as Arian, but now she's just yeah. Lieutenant Nelson, and there you are now. <laughs> so I'm wondering if she had a two-year contract, and uh, they were like, all right. We'll keep you on the show. I don't you know. know what... we'll, 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 we'll kill off a different actress in your old spot. You know what I mean? Like, just keep her. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure seemed, what the deal was. Weird. With that. Yeah, it is kind of odd. When I watched her walk on the bridge, I'm like, uh, what is she doing there? Mm. And then they just do this throw it. Like, I see her walk on the bridge. I'm like, I've never seen that person before, but she looks familiar. Oh, yeah, that's the old Arium. And then all of a sudden, Lieutenant Nelson, welcome to the bridge. You know, it's like, thanks for that little throwaway line that, uh, it was like a soap opera scene there for a moment. And now the, the uh, role of Chad is being played by Rick Henderson. You know, like right. you hear that on a soap, right? You know, so. And I only know that because I did grow up watching General Hospital as a kid with my mom in the afternoons at 2 o'clock, okay? So, so who's uh, who's Rick Hen- Henderson? I made what, it up. I have no idea. What, what, kind of, uh, what kind of mic presence does he have? <laughs> I'm just curious. You know. <laughs> I'm Rick Henderson, and I'm here to smash your face. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was just thinking of WWE for, you know. Yeah. I do love the pro wrestling shout outs. Yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. we got to make these bingo cards at some point, guys. So when we have these little weird asides with pro wrestling or Paddington Bear or whatever, <laughs> an 80s reference from some movie that has nothing to do with Trek, you know, we can we can just throw it in there. <laughs> well, you know, the star in the middle in the middle of the bingo board, the star that like everybody gets. Yeah. That yeah. should just say that should just say post office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Everybody gets that one for free. Oh well. All right. All right. So we're moving back into the feedback section, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start off first on the feedback because we missed it last week and I feel bad. But for those of you who are getting on to our coffee account and uh, donating a couple of bucks, uh, we want yeah, to say shout out to everybody who does and all that. Yeah, we really appreciate that. That's over at coffee.com slash trekcat. Or you can just go to coffee and look for coffee is spelled O dash F I dot com. Mm-hmm. So some people pronounce it Kofi, but it's supposed to be coffee. So we had two two more donations since our last show. Uh, the first one, of course, is uh, well, first one's from uh, someone named Gentry. I'm not sure I recognize that from the group on Facebook, but it doesn't matter. And he says, uh, he says in his, his uh, comments, because every time you, you leave us a little bit of money, a couple bucks, three, four bucks, uh, you can leave some comments and then we'll read them on the air. And you'll see why yeah. this is important here in a moment when I read Mike Medina's uh, later. <laughs> so, uh, Gentry says, uh, space boobs, time boobs, keep up the great work, love being in this community. So <laughs> then, of course, we come to Mr. Mike Medina, who I know donated another three bucks just so he could make me read. <laughs> this on the air (laughs) worth it i'm gonna sing it just because he wrote it okay oh boy i don't want anybody else when i think about you i touch myself oh Oh, i don't want anybody (laughs) else oh no oh no oh no that's what he wrote in his comments those those lyrics to that song so there it is thank you mike it 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 makes me wonder what the money's for now (laughs) Or dangerously uh, getting onto the, uh, you know, what do you call it, the escort service kind of Yeah. The... <laughs> the, the men of Church Gag's calendar is coming more real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so those are our two latest donations over on Coffee. We appreciate those. And, of course, when you make a donation, you can type in anything you want, and you're going to force one of the three of us to say it, sing it, or spray it on the air. There you go. Dude. There's my feedback. Uh, I don't think we had any other emails over in the uh, chat is wrong. I'm looking that up real quick because I don't remember seeing anything new. And I don't. Therefore, I'm right. I got one. There you go. Go for it, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So this comes from Douglas Alexander. Uh, The headline is, thanks for the trans warp. And uh, Douglas wrote, you have so much. uh, I have to say how much I appreciate the scene from the search for Spock at the end of last week's show. So what? Two shows ago? Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, may the winds be ever at your back. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so he just likes it. You know, he, he enjoys the show. 
he put what ship he's from. He's from the USS Atlanta NCC one eight four seven. So there <laughs> oh, you go. Cool. cool. Yeah, cool. I don't know what his rank is though. He didn't put that in. Huh. Interesting. So. Well, for those of you who didn't pick up on that, there's always something at the end of every one of our podcasts. So if you listen to the whole thing, but but then when you think it's towards the end and you cut it off, you might be cutting off anywhere from a short clip of 30 seconds to half of a feature length movie of three hours and 25 minutes. At the right. End of the podcast, and you're missing some things. So make sure even on the older episodes, we've been doing this ever since we started recording way back in December of <laughs> 2016. So uh, hey. terrible country music, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Sometimes it's horrible music. That last week, holy crap! I You're laughed welcome. so hard. I had to, I couldn't listen to it. It was so bad, but it was fun. <laughs> so I stopped it after about thirty seconds. I'm like, this isn't going anywhere. This guy's actually serious. I'm stopping now. I know. So, That's what made it great. I know it makes your ears bleed. That's what makes it awesome. Yeah. So with that said, gentlemen, we're at a milestone. Do you know what the milestone is? We start episode. Yeah, 200th episode. This is the 200th episode of TrekCast. I don't know how many shows we've done. We're well over 30 at this point. But, uh, well, maybe right around 30. But anyway, hey, we're at 200 episodes. Nice. That's great. So between 2008, when this show started, and 2019, <laughs> 11 years, <laughs> only three. Oh, hey, we got there. Hey, hey yeah. <laughs> so we've done more episodes between the three of us than the total number of episodes the four years prior. Hey, there you go. Wow. Two, uh, three and a half years, I think, if I cut it off. So it's like three and a half, close to four years. So it's quite a few. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. It, it, you know, in all fairness to the uh, earlier iteration of the show, all of those years that they were doing the show, there was <laughs> there was not uh, a current Star Trek series on the yeah, air. That's true. Where, no. where they would you know, where they could easily fall into a weekly format like we've been able to do over the last, you know, eight, nine, ten weeks, whatever it is that we've we've gone right. weekly. Right. So. Yeah. Yep. So should I go ahead and review this? Yep, let's do the reviews. Okay. So uh, got another toy from Diamond Select. It is the communicator, the original series communicator. Um, this thing, okay, so comparatively... I have a Galaxy uh, S9, <laughs> yeah. So that's you know the size difference right there, pretty pretty close. That's how big they were on the original series. Uh, you know I don't know if it's exact scale. But it I feels think like it, it would. Yeah, I think the diamond stuff. Um, their intention when they first started doing them was to be <laughs> one to one to one. Uh, as well, not for the ships, to, but well, not the ships. No, but yeah. the props. <laughs> <laughs> the props are supposed to be one to one. Um, yeah. The the ones from Enterprise, the Enterprise pistol that yeah. was made by Art Asylum, which which I think was acquired think by, yeah. yeah, I think was acquired by uh, Diamond Select later on. But later, there are later seasons of Enterprise where the prop house just bought the toys. And, oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh they, that's great. You know, they just they just touched them up a little bit and actually used them on screen. Oh that's funny. Yeah, that's fun. So this is pretty cool. It flips open. It has a little communicator sound. <laughs> and then I noticed this deal. So there's two buttons on it, right? If you hold down the middle button, it'll flash red, and then it unlocks more sounds. Like Uhura and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Huh. Yeah. And then, it, you know, you close the lid and it stops. So it feels pretty nice. weighty, too, for what it is. You could definitely hurt somebody by chucking it at them. So <laughs> that's nice. It's a defensive tool. <clears throat> so in other words, you could throw it at a Gorn and you'd be okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you'd be okay, but you'd, you'd definitely hit them for a second and, you know, daze them. So, yeah, I really like it. <clears throat> Retail, I think, is about 60 bucks. Wow. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's okay cool. though. That sounds yeah. a little spendy, but hey, once you get one, you don't need like five of them. So you need well, one, you, and there you go. You need two. I mean, who are you going to talk to? Right. Exactly. exactly. Well, would two of them actually work like a walkie-talkie? In that <laughs> no, case, no, I would, no, no, I would no, buy them. And sixty bucks sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I think, if uh, they were somebody... eighty or ninety bucks, I'd I'd buy two of them a piece. You know, if, if you could actually use it like a 
walkie talkie. That'd be kind of slick. I think I somebody cool. did a uh, somebody did a Bluetooth version a couple of years ago. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. All right, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. I just noticed something a minute ago. And everybody watching this on, on YouTube, when we put this up, is going to notice it too, Daniel. What? You freaking traitor, you. What? What'd I do? You are wearing a Star Wars t-shirt on a Star Trek podcast. Yeah, it was clean. <laughs> <laughs> it was clean. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just giving you shit. I just yeah. noticed it when you straightened up your shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's like, damn it, Chad. Why'd you do that? I don't care. <laughs> I know. I'm just playing with you. Anyway, yeah. all right. Yeah. All right. That's it for our reviews. That's it for the reviews. And we've got all of our feedback done. Uh, oh, you had some. Uh, we actually do have some more feedback stuff real quick before we go into our two topics. And it's uh, some questions from the group because you posted up a thing. Oh, in the, uh, that's group. right. I always forget I do this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, now, if I can get the thing to pull up on Facebook, you know. Yeah. Oh, there's your deal with O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Oh, for crying out loud, I won't pull up. This is ridiculous. I hate Facebook. I really do. If Tell you what, let's do let's do the Orville, yeah. and while we're doing that, uh, we'll do uh, this that feedback in between the two. All right, that sounds good. Let's go right into the Orville. Yeah. Do you have the uh, the rundown on it, Chad? Nope, I don't. Uh, I'll do it. I'll say, do it. Yeah, I can do it from it. scratch. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can just pull something out. So basically, um, there's a time capsule um, from 2015. Um, Lieutenant Commander Tuvok, who's now a historian. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they open this time capsule um, on the Orville. They, they find a bunch of things circa 2015. One of the things they find is a smartphone. Um, and Lamar, the engineer, um, Lamar helps the historian uh unlocked the smartphone and it's basically a treasure trove of information about 2015 um they find a video of a woman from 2015 the woman whose phone it is and yep. malloy malloy becomes uh infatuated with her and he takes the phone to the holodeck has the computer scan the phone and essentially recreate this woman and her life based on all the information in the phone. And then he proceeds to fall in love with her. So that is the, that is the synopsis of the show. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed this episode. I thought this was, Oh man, I'm looking at the face <laughs> Chad's making right now. You know, you didn't like it. Um, it's not so much that I didn't like it. It's yet. Here we go again. This story has been done. It has, but it hasn't. Um, it has been done. You're right. Yeah, you're thinking it's Leo Brahms and Jordan. Yeah, Hill. yeah, yep. Barkley and all that. It's been done, but they did have a, they did put their own twist on it, where it was done, where they created the character automatically from information they knew about her as a real person. So that was right. a nice little twist to it, which I thought was yeah was well it was done. Also, it was also commentary on the early 21st century in yes. that. Everything about you as a person is contained in one device that you carry around every yeah. day. Yeah. And it honestly, it's true. If yeah. you think about it, you know, I'm doing this podcast with you right now, mm -hmm. doing it on my phone. Yeah. My little side business, everything is on my phone. Every communication with my wife is on my phone via this yeah. phone. Yeah. Um, if there was one place where a future society would look, to create a computer recreation of me. Yeah, this is that's that's what they would look at. With that that's said definitely though, what they look at. With that said though, and, and and I know it's a show and because you know reasons it's fine, I don't care, but this thing doesn't work for 4 years, let alone 400 years. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're disposable. We're replacing them so fast anymore, but uh I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah. <clears throat> No, I get it. it. It was a very, it was a very good point, um, and I thought the story was very well told, mm -hmm. uh, kind of touching at times. And Gordon yeah. has, Gordon does have a point uh, to some extent that that she is real. Um, mm -hmm. But with that said, you know, it's yet again where we've got another story that's been told. The only saving grace to this episode, where I wouldn't sit here and say it was one of the worst ones I've seen, it's not quite one of the worst ones I've seen, but it's close. Uh, but the saving grace to that was the whole beeline with uh, with Bordas and uh, and his husband <laughs> with the smoking. 
<laughs> smoking I mean, cigarettes. That was just the funniest. The only yeah, way, it was funny. It was pretty good. The, the, they needed the mustache with the cigarettes. Yes, they did. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then the throwaway line: "What are you, a firefighter now?" That, ah, still, that's hysterical. <laughs> but um, if they would have made that pot or cannabis, mm-hmm. that would have mm-hmm. been just the, that would have just been the funniest thing <laughs> ever. Getting high on the bridge, you know. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what's going on. The, the the thing with the cigarettes was pretty good. That was yeah. pretty good. So. Well, I I think there was another interpretation of this uh, episode that is being overlooked, which is that, which is that this idea of him forming this relationship with this simulation of a person on the holodeck, mm-hmm. and him having real feelings for a person that essentially doesn't exist, mm-hmm. I think it's also commentary on people who have these relationships via the internet yeah where they've never actually met this person yeah. where their friends may say to them hey man she's not real yeah she's not real not that she's not a real person but you know it's been five years you've never been in the same room with her you've never held her you've never uh kissed her you've never smelled her you've never um you know shared a, any sort of physical experience with her i I think it's an allegory, or at least it could be. I don't know if they intended it that way, but I, I mean, think it could be an allegory for that. That that's exactly how I took it, and being somebody who okay, just good. came out of something like that. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that kind of hit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna, you know, put your personal business. Out yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it it hit me pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that is sure. true. I mean, if people have had relationships like that before, I could see how this episode would kind of impact them a little differently than it would someone like myself. But um. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Those are all fair points. Yeah. It wasn't a horrible episode. I just, it's yet and again it, where we've got the same stories being told over and over again. Right. Yeah. Well, I want something I mean, new. Well, you know, there's, I think Daniel said it a couple weeks ago, there's there's a limited amount of stories you could tell. I don't remember yeah. the list you gave, but, you know, man versus self, man versus yeah. machine, man versus environment, whatever, whatever right. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, <laughs> it also it also touched on, it also touched on some other themes um, that we've seen before in Star Trek. Um, it touched on it. It touched on time travel, believe it or not. When he deleted the boyfriend from the program, yeah, okay, it, it's the same concept as the butterfly effect. Yeah, okay, it's the same concept of I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to change this, but there's unintended consequences when I get back to the future. That you know. Because this didn't happen, that didn't happen. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess Chad and I disagree. I really, I just, yeah. I really like the episode. I, I guess I really like the 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 old, the old format where you just tell a tell one good story in forty four minutes and yeah, fair enough, and yeah. it's over. You know the. I don't know. Well, the I'm thing, not so... the thing about yeah, the thing about the Orville that's kind of. I mean, it is what it is, right? It's a light. It's it's a Star Trek light kind mm-hmm. of thing, and that's fine. I'm good with that. It's a, it's a fun show. I have a lot of fun enjoying it, and it's it's that's all good. But the thing about it that I keep kind of going back to when I keep saying I want some new stories, well, this ship apparently is not supposed to be an exploratory ship, even though they say that at some point. I know at some point they've said that. Maybe it was first season where you know they're explorers, yeah. right? That's what they are. They're mm-hmm. explorers. Right. They don't explore jack shit. <laughs> I mean, right. they really don't go anywhere new, other than every so every sixteenth episode, maybe. I mean, they really don't go anywhere new, right? So mm-hmm. we don't even know where they were, particularly in this episode. They were around a planet because we kept getting shots of it, mm-hmm. but we have no idea what they were doing, and that's okay. You don't have to always know that, but you know, it doesn't seem like they're much on the explore exploration side, right? So that's what I think is is missing from the show, um, not the exploration side, but but that little bit of extra depth, right? So you've got the main story going on with Gordon. You've got the B plot going on with, uh, with Bordas and Clyden and their smoking habit, which is hysterical, but, but we don't, we don't really, we don't really know like what's the purpose of the ship today. And this like a couple of little easy throwaway, they could be just doing some scans or something, you know, we're somewhere new and you just drop a line somewhere, but there's no, there's no depth to it. You know, that's, that's I, kind of the way the show I, is. And I guess that's I, okay, but. I think that's part of them um, having to differentiate themselves from Star Trek a certain amount. Okay. Star Trek has a specific format where 
or at least it used to, yeah. where every episode opens the same way. The ship is panning by, and you hear the captain say, Captain's Log, start date, such and such. This is what we're, we did last week. This is right. what we're doing right now. This yeah. is the, the setup for the show. And I feel like if they did that, that would establish everything that you're just talking about except yeah. it would also cement in everyone's mind that this is uh, this is a clone of Star Trek. And maybe that's one of those elements that in the initial meetings that they had, okay, we need to eliminate certain elements. Um, yeah, right. our warpness, our, we can't have two warp nacelles. They can't be on the top. They can't be a left <laughs> and a right. Okay, we'll do mm -hmm. three, and we'll you know do them the other way. And right, we, yeah. can't, we can't have a transporter, so we use the shuttle for everything, and no captain's log. Mm hmm that's just my thought on it. Yeah, I, yeah. I also get the feeling, though, that, like, in their universe, um, more of space has already been explored. Whereas in Star Trek, it feels like everything is the wild, wild west. You know? Yeah, well, they have Super Nitro in their shuttles, so they can right. get places faster and explore yeah. more. And <laughs> Super Nitro. <laughs> Ludicrous <laughs> speed! Oh, we got a plaid. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh well i mean it's okay episode but you know i wouldn't rank it up there in one of, one of my favorites so i think we've yeah. said that enough um was there anything else we missed that we want to well we want to talk about bordis and clyden's little smoking habit and their fights they get into over one quit <laughs> uh computer make 500 cigarettes i mean that was just that's a gigantic stack of cigarettes <laughs> He and then, he, the and then he hid them. He had them yeah. hidden everywhere in his apartment. Opens yeah. up the uh, pillow and dumps out like a thousand of them from inside the pillow. I mean, there was no stuffing in that pillow. It was just cigarettes. You know? <laughs> yeah, it was great. That was pretty good. So Apparently cigarettes are delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of knew something was up the minute he smelled one and he had that look on his face and he was like, interesting. I thought, oh, he's just going to like want to eat those things, you know? So. Right. <laughs> Someone made a, a comment somewhere that it would have been hysterical to have them start to smoke them from the wrong side, you know, <laughs> like like yeah. the <laughs> That's bad. That's uh, bad. Yeah. Um, from the perspective of a former smoker mm -hmm. who has accidentally lit a cigarette from the wrong side. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's not good. No. That's not oh, no. good. Ugh. I've never been a smoker. Uh, I've never never done any chew. A lot of the guys, uh, all my buddies hanging out, you know, when we were young, um, a few of them did a little bit of both, and but I was right. never big on any of that. Um, I was always a designated driver as well, so I didn't do anything stupid. But uh, <laughs> that said, every once in a while, I do uh, smoke a cigar. Mm -hmm. You know, probably about four or five times a year. When it's nice outside, I'll be on my back deck. Nine o'clock at night, kids are in bed. I'll just have a cigar. I may not even light it. I might just sit there and just chew one and just kind of sit there. With mm -hmm. a, it's a scotch, you know. Yeah. Do my best uh, Denny Crane impersonation. So, nice. <laughs> well, as someone who who uh, smoked for, geez, almost twenty years. Ooh, man. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's yep. a long time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen to about. Uh, yeah. Fourteen to sometime in my early thirties. Yeah. I smoked cigarettes. Yeah. So. Um, you know, when someone has a baby and they offer me a cigar, mm -hmm. I say no, because a couple times I said yes. And just, I know you're not Crazy. supposed to, in, well, I'm not supposed, you're not supposed to inhale a cigar. Mm -hmm. and oh, just, yeah. I would. I naturally would just inhale yeah. it. And uh, yeah, it's not good. No, nope. it's not good. <laughs> All so. right. Welcome what? to Cigar Cast, the Galaxy. Exactly. <laughs> most wonderful cigar podcast yeah yeah i forgot to add that in there the most unpredictable star trek podcast oh well yeah it's okay because it's unpredictable that's right that's right that's the whole point sometimes we do it sometimes we don't all what right else? anything else anything else going over the orville um we've got three weeks until the next show comes on so they're doing this weird ass spacing with the show this year i'm not sure why yeah i don't hmm. know any any theories on the why they're doing that i mean it's NCAA kind of like, I is the only thing i could think of Oh, March Madness. Yeah. They just want to avoid it. Well, like, I, apparently they've never heard of DVR. I mean, <laughs> I know. But, oh, you know. the, um, this is interesting. Um, I think the Fox deal is done. I think it went it through. It is done. Yeah. yeah. So Disney owns it. Yeah. Disney owns it now. And you know how I knew? Um, I didn't read it online. I, I went to access the, 
um, the app, the Fox app, to watch mm-hmm. this show. And there was some update to the terms of service. And, you know, I just clicked, the, I just clicked yes. And right before it faded, my, my eyes just tuned in on one word in the middle of the paragraph. And that word was Disney. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I said, oh, yep. I guess it happened. Yeah, it's official. So, yep. It closed <laughs> sometime this week at like 12.03 in the morning or something weird like that. I'm not yeah. sure why they have to do these at midnight or whatever. But I can, I can imagine there's some very rich lawyers sitting around a conference room table and they're all drinking scotch and watching the clock. And it, right after the strike at midnight, that's when they start signing paperwork or some some stupid yeah. ass reason. Instead of coming in in the morning at 9 o'clock like a respectable lawyer would. Anyway. Um, a what? A respectable lawyer, yeah. Well, I don't know what's what that, that is. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> um, anyway. Well, All right, um, so we want to... Go ahead. Well, I've no, got I that just, feedback. I, I was just going to say that, um, you know, just keep in mind that Star Wars and the Orville are both owned by Disney now. So mm-hmm. that yeah. uh, that crossover that we've all dreamed of uh, could be happening. It could happen. It could happen <laughs> at this point. That could would be. be amazing. That would be amazing. So, yeah, I've got the Facebook uh, page pulled up with your uh, post, Daniel. I don't know if you have it pulled up, too, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to I don't know why. I got a bone to pick with you there. Why did you pick Kai Wynn? Because um, <laughs> I wanted it to stand out. Yeah, what was yeah, the well, question? It does, it does. Because when I read that, when I read that uh, comment you put on, over her picture, <laughs> I can hear her saying it in her condescending my child kind of voice. Well, know? that's why I, put, I started I know. with my child. I just know. To put it in her voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good what job. was good job. What was the question? He, he asked me why I picked Kai Win for the. No, 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 no. The question on Facebook. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. My child, oh. leave comments and questions for the next Trek cast below. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you can, you can hear her saying it. And her head's tilted too, and her condescending. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 She's it's, probably. I don't want to say she was the most unique villain in Star Trek, but she was definitely one of the most memorable villains. Because I don't really think of Q as a villain. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's always yeah. he's kind of characterized as the bad guy, but he's never really a bad guy. He's just toying with everybody, right? He's just having fun. So I don't necessarily picture Q as a villain, but boy, Kai Wen is definitely downright nasty villain. And she's just, boy, she sticks with you. Every time she comes up on the screen, I'm like, oh, shit. You know, it's like, I don't know. Even when I was watching it, when it was first airing, <laughs> Kai Wynn would come on. I was like, oh, man, what evil is she going to perpetrate today? You know what I'm saying? I can mm. remember. That. And she's just, she was one of the most unique villains in the series, in my mind. Um, I, I, I think she's more manipulative than Giorgio. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, because Giorgio doesn't hide her manipulation like Kai right. did. Giorgio just comes right out and says, no, I have sex with everybody. <laughs> right. That's right, Poppy. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Poppy. That was just, oh, man. Tilly's reaction to that. What just happened? Yeah. We'll have <laughs> to talk about that later. Yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. That was hysterical. Yeah. But anyway, so that was your question you posted up on the group, and we got a whole bunch of feedback. Um, well, let's go through I, some of them. We don't have to go yeah, through Yeah, we're not going to hit all of them at once. But, uh, yeah, what are some of the top ones you want to hit, Daniel? Uh, let's see. Which is your favorite Starfleet uniform and why? Hmm. I'm partial um, to the I'm partial to the first contact style uniform, the yeah. gray top, gray top, yeah. black bottom, and the colored uh, <laughs> turtleneck. I do like the Discovery ones, but I think that's my favorite. the The first contact. Honestly, I would have to go. I, I would have. It, it's a tie, and this is going to sound weird when I say this, but it really is. It's a tie between the maroon uniforms from Star Trek II: Wrath of Khan mm-hmm. when they they when they introduced those those maroons. Mm-hmm. I love those. I don't know how comfortable mm-hmm. they are, but whatever. And the uniforms from uh, Star Trek Beyond. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are just so slick. Um, and they had like 50 million uniform changes. In <laughs> I don't know why, but they did. Um, they did. But I love just the standard uniform on the bridge, you know, when they're on the bridge. Uh, those, the, the classic gold and, and red and blue, but but done in a very, they have like a grid pattern to them. And, yeah, yeah. They're really kind of detailed. They're not just a solid color. Although I do love Pike's uh, gold uh, command uniform when we see it in, in the first episode. There was the first or second episode of the season of Discovery. I first. do like the way that they, yeah, for, I do like the way they made that look too. Yeah. But um, if I really had to pick and I really had to come down and nail what would I what would I have? It would probably be the uh, uniforms from from Beyond because they don't look dated. 
uh, like the Maroons do. But overall, I would say uh, the Maroons are probably, you know, up there. You know, it's funny that you say dated because, um, in a way, uniforms are, are kind of timeless. Uh, yeah. In fact, the United States Army recently recently redesigned their Class A uniforms, and they <laughs> went back. They went back to the design that was used during World War II. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they actually they look really sharp. They look really yeah, I'm sharp. Yeah, sure they do. I'm so sure I mean, they that kind of that kind of sets a real world precedence that uh, you know we could see this Picard series and see the twentieth twenty fifth century Starfleet. And they're they're running around in uh, jumpsuits from Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. Or they could be wearing the puffy white shirt from Seinfeld. You never know. The pirate yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. The pirate so, shirt. <laughs> I remember, uh, well, like Dune, right? Think of that. So the movie Dune, with all of their different outfits and costumes, it looks more like medieval time attire, even though they're, you know, more technically advanced. You got that <laughs> steampunk kind of vibe thing going on. Um, I want to see Picard and something like that. That'd be cool. Anyway, all right. So that was the first question. Um, who should get their own show besides Picard was one of our other questions. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, really. Um, and, of course, someone commented instantly, not Kai Wynn, which, of course, you know, <laughs> unless the series, unless that series opens up with her death, um, I would not want to see that. Um, uh, yeah, who would get their own show besides Picard? Um, I would like to see the further adventures of Vic Fontaine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Uh, Garrick would be interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you had a show that was all about the Obsidian Order and Garrick uh, trying to whatever with it, um, mm -hmm. that would be that would be fascinating. He's probably of of all the characters of of all of the Star Trek characters ever, he's got to be in my top five. Garrick. I wonder if you could do like a a Homeland inspired Maquis. Mm. you know yeah you, i'm sure you i don't i don't have a lot of love for the maquis i mean i understand what they were doing and i understand the, the writing and all that's fine but i don't mm. need to see any more of the maquis in my take but uh as far as an individual character <coughs> uh, man that's tough uh yeah it's always been an ensemble show it yeah. is it and is. even this and even this Picard show that's that's coming out we all know it's it's going to be Picard's show but they're building an ensemble cast around right. him yeah so yeah i don't know i, don't, I guess I, i'd rather i guess i'd rather i'd rather, I'd rather do it as, as like an ensemble right but the main in that ensemble would be captain janeway and how she dies because at some point she has to die does she <laughs> die a woman does she die in action you know i, I think I she dies dead, but just the whole you know What's the rest of her story, right? She dies in a prison riot in Connecticut, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's how. <laughs> Orange is the new black, yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying, though? I mean, because when they all come back, like, what happens? They all get dispersed. Voyager crew, just, they get dispersed everywhere. They don't stay together. We don't know that. Gotta, we, don't know any, we don't know anything. No, we don't. That's, that's kind of what I... <clears throat> it's kind of what I dislike about the finale for that series is that everything that we know about what happens to them after the ship gets back is erased by the very show that you're watching. So we really know nothing. No, nope, we at don't. End of those two hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, other questions we have in here, um, man, some of these questions are hard. We can't really like which, which, uh, which Federation ship has the best captain's chair. Oh my Lord. Um, give me three hours, Sam. And I'll yeah. figure it out. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, <clears throat> da, 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 da. There's a lot of questions here, so we can't hit all of them. But we are when we do read these guys, I do take notes. I do jot these down as possible future topics. So, you yeah. know, keep posting. We'll pick them out as we go. Um, we're going to need show ideas after uh, after Discovery. Oh, no, we don't. I got a million. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, we're going to have to figure out. We're going to need ideas to kind of figure out how to pare that down. I mean, I, I have a list that's probably 150 topics. <laughs> long, so, um yeah. And then we just have to pare it down. So what's another one of these questions here? I know some of these questions go, are you are you disappointed with this week's episode and who the Red Angel is? Because spoiler alert. We'll, we'll talk about that. that so. We'll talk about that. We'll go through it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> one of the comments was, aren't you dead, Win? <laughs> yes, Kai, Kai Win is dead. Um, okay, so that's it on that part of the yeah, feedback. Yeah, that's it on 
Um, I don't think there's anything else that we need to necessarily cover because we're going to get into it when we go into the topic, which, of course, is the Red Angel. Uh, this yeah, week's episode of Discovery. Yeah. yeah. What he said. Um, so I can give a quick synopsis of this one if you guys want, because um, I just watched it again for the second time last night. I'm, yeah. I'm getting into the habit of watching these these twice so that I can solidify the synopsis in my head, but also make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, right. which, I, I, like, sh- I should probably do that. Like that time when uh, the lieutenant walked on, the very first time around when I watched it, when Lieutenant uh, Nelson walks <laughs> off the bridge, I didn't quite, I was like, whatever, that's a throwaway line. And the second time watching it, I was like, oh, I know who that is. But anyway, um, in brief, we have... Uh, Admiral Cornwell is still on Discovery, and they have a Section 31 ship coming in to talk to them, and they're trying to figure out uh, who the Red Angel is. That's kind of the, the major overarching thing of this, this whole episode, is who is the Red Angel, and how do we figure out who it is, and how do we trap that person to keep them from bringing this future AI back into their timeline? Because they think they have controls AI wrapped up, but they're not sure. I think that's where the episode starts is they're in the conference room talking about it. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, that, that is where it starts because this is a very interesting thing. We always talk about, well, we're not going to know this about Spock or we're not going to see Spock until the very last few minutes. And then of course the next episode comes up, we find out who Spock, we see Spock in the first 30 seconds. Well, before the opening credits even roll in this episode, Tilly comes running into the conference room and tells everybody who the red angel is. Right. And it's Michael Burnham, which you know, we can get into that later in the episode, but when they said that, I'm thinking to myself, okay, <laughs> everything is always about Michael. That was a little annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then again, she's a lead character of the show, so I guess it's kind of obvious after you state it, but not obvious. Anyway, so they get that from uh, the data that they went through with Arium, because that is actually how the show opens up, is they're taking Arium's skull cap off. You see her brain's exposed underneath a glass plate, mm-hmm. and uh, they're erasing all of her data. Uh, They're getting rid of all of it, which, of course, the first time I watched it, I was like, why are they doing that? What's the point of that? They're going to launch her out into nowhere. Well, because she's infected by the AI. They want to make sure it's gone. They talk about that in the conference room. Saru does Mm -hmm. about this is what we've done to make sure that the AI is gone. And, of course, it could still be lingering around like we talked about last week. The the Mm -hmm. AI, there's no way that it's dead and totally gone. There's just no way. How do you contain something like that? It's going to it's going to be able to find a way to to get out. So and, and uh, Captain Pike points this out. that We don't really know that. We don't know that it's gone. And right. of course, Admiral Cornwall says, uh, you know, we've got to figure out how to contain it when we find it again, whenever mm-hmm. it comes back around. Because apparently it's still there in the future. Right. So we've got this little paradox going on. We've erased it now, but yet it could still somehow be around in the future. Right. So I don't What's like the that. Whole... Little... It's the whole Skynet thing. Each it is the whole Skynet. Yeah, yeah. Each time they destroy Skynet, Skynet's still there. It, it you know, it comes about a little bit differently. But Finds it's another way. There. Finds another way. So, and that makes sense, kind of. So, um, if you don't think about it too hard, it makes sense. So, moving forward, they come up with this great plan uh, on how to capture Michael. You know, and of course, we get this scene where they want to make sure that the uh, information that they just got from Arium's data. Uh, and the biosignature that indicates that the red angel is Michael. They want to double check that in the medical bay. And who, of course, do they want to use to do that? Not the chief medical officer. They want to use Dr. Kolber, who's not in uniform for the entire episode. So, right. like, he's not reinstated. He's not really the doctor. He's not the chief medical officer. He's not anybody. He's just walking around in a great black suit making him look sexy, right? He for looks some like he walked ass. off the set of Miami Vice. He looks like he walked off the set of Miami Vice. You're absolutely right. So, I'm not understanding why they're... I, I can understand why they're doing that part, honestly, because he's not been reinstated, right? He just came right. back from the dead, and... And he has, he's been kind of cleared for active duty because they say that in an episode, but they yeah. don't actually put him in uniform. That's weird. <laughs> so why does Captain Pike want to have him do the scans of Burnham? What, what, what's the point of that? Uh, I don't understand that. I guess just to have his character be... A, who's just to chief, have the dude there. Who's the freaking chief medical officer of the Discovery and why do we never see him? Who's the chief engineer and why do we never see him? Is it still this, no, it's not. We're two seasons in. We don't know who the chief engineer is, and we don't know who the chief medical officer is. Yeah, what in the hell? It's irritating. So anyway, so he does the scans. They confirm it's Burnham. Okay, great. So now we're trying to capture future Burnham. And this is the my 
favorite part of this whole episode. She's sitting there and they're sitting there saying, you know, why, you know, how could this possibly be me? And of course, Spock goes, well, it fits your emotional profile since you seem to feel the need to try to save and solve every puzzle and every one. You know, it's like mm. <laughs> this little dig he gives. And then, of course, she's and she's like, well, why do I have to like wear this suit or whatever I'm whatever it is I'm doing? It goes, well, because you have a penchant for the dramatic. And you see Pike and Admiral Cornwall kind of smile a little bit, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like dig double dig and of course she just looks right at him and goes well thank you for that insight spock i appreciate mm -hmm. you sharing that with the entire team yeah. that was fun i laughed pretty hard both times i watched that that was pretty yeah. good so they come up with this plan to capture the red angel and it involves them killing michael burnham which was my favorite part of the episode she's gonna I die knew you'd love that part yeah. she's gonna die and she does. yeah this 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 two-part plan that they have yeah only needs one part yeah. <laughs> if she becomes the Red Angel mm -hmm. and the whole point is to prevent the Red Angel from doing what it's been doing, mm -hmm. why doesn't Section 31 just take her out? Why can't they just kill her? Just exactly. take her out. Exactly. Exactly. Well, because then they, they set truly... up the Ghostbuster trap. <laughs> yeah. True. But I mean, if they truly are this, this Black Ops, um, by any means necessary, <laughs> um, preserve the federation at all costs they should just be trying to kill her they should just take her out yep it's very simple we kill her yep. we're done but yeah. they know something that we don't know all right and this is where it comes out in this episode that this suit that the red angel is using was actually developed not only by section 31 but by michael burnham's mom and dad they were in section 31 yeah and what's his name uh Captain uh, Leland is the one who basically gets him killed. Gets him killed. Mm -hmm. So we find that out too, and that's when you know Burnham beats the crap out of Leland, which that was kind of satisfying a little bit. I have to admit, even Spock was saying he wished he could have seen that. That would have been satisfying. <coughs> um, which is an odd thing for Spock to say. I mean, really, I realize this isn't the Spock we know from the original series because he's not like grown up yet, apparently, yeah. but. You know, the smiling Spock, the emotional flipping the chessboard Spock and the family game of chess now saying it would have been satisfying to see someone get the crap beat out of them. Um, you know, at some point he changes. I get it, whatever. But it's a little irritating. So um, where was I in the storyline here? Oh, uh, he gets. Um, so he gets beat up. That's about halfway through the episode at that point. And then they go to this Esau four. And we learn about that through a meeting between Captain Giorgio and uh stamets and tilly and that's when poppy walks in <laughs> he's apparently there looking for admiral cornwell although they make it like awkward as all hell um but again my love for for giorgio is just unending this is just a fantastic oh, i can't scene. wait for her show it's just a fantastic scene and she's making everybody feel uncomfortable on yeah. purpose she's having fun with it you know you can tell she's just totally goading them and she's yeah. flirting with stamets and stamets is like you do realize i'm gay right <laughs> yeah that was funny but um <coughs> at any rate that whole thing comes out when they're trying to figure out how no, to no 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 stamets didn't say that yeah he does no Cul it was culver who said you do realize he's gay right or was it and the other stamets way or... does, he does say you do realize he's gay right culver says that and of course stamets goes i'm pretty sure that in this universe and any other universe yeah. i would be in i'm gay yeah, Which is I, kind of a dumb thing to say. I mean, I get what they're doing there, but it's kind of stupid to say because there's an mm. infinite number of possibilities, Stamets. Mm, in some universe, yeah. you could really like dogs. Okay, I don't know what to yeah. say about that, but <laughs> uh, I kind of felt like I kind of felt like Giorgio was. Uh, you know, I know she's she's supposed to be kind of like a bad guy in this yeah. show, but she was kind of playing matchmaker there. Like, let me mm -hmm. make these let me make these two guys jealous <laughs> right yeah. here, so they'll realize they still love each other and and get back together that's how that 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 played for me yeah <laughs> i get that that's probably what she was trying to do but at the same time i think she's her same old character self where she's just trying to interject drama for the yeah. sake of being an evil person <laughs> you know what i'm saying she's just trying to make everybody feel uncomfortable which she's really good at yeah that's true i didn't really like the way she kept saying esau four um esau four. i mean she had to pronounce it with like six syllables you know but mm -hmm. uh, anyway I, I get that that's probably just her accent, but um, uh, 
and I've never heard of this planet before. I'm not sure why this planet's never come up before, but uh, I, something. Anyway, that planet's interesting, though. I do like the uh, the set and the scene of when they finally get there and they beam down to set up their Ghostbuster trap to try to capture the Red Angel. Um, it was totally the, a Ghostbuster trap. It was totally a Ghostbuster trap. Yeah. Um, but it was a very interesting setup that they had down there. And, of course, uh, they get down there. They're going to kill Michael in this chair that they strap her into by exposing her to the atmosphere, hoping that the Red Angel shows up and saves her. Well, wouldn't the Red Angel, like, know? I mean, hello, this plan is yep. stupid. The Red Angel would know what you're doing, okay? I mean, give me a break. There's <laughs> So, but that's, Especially of course, if it's the... Burnham. Exactly. Yeah. You know it's Burnham. Biosignatures yeah. match. So, you, so she's going to know that this happened, right? There's this weird paradox here. Yeah. And you think she's going to be able to break her out or figure a way around it because she's got plenty of time to figure it out because she knew it happened. So, Well, that and, you know, once she figures, once future Burnham or Red Angel or whatever figures out that this happened because yeah. it's past tense right. for her, for that right. future person, okay? Why go back in time to the point where in time where it's actually happening why not right. go back an hour before that right and just and take just prevent it from happening yeah, take it from yes happening. yeah exactly take her for the, exactly exactly so, it doesn't make sense no yeah. it doesn't make it doesn't make sense from their own if they logically walk through it themselves it doesn't make sense and spock yeah. should know this he's the logical one out of the whole group he should know and so should Burnham. like the mm. two of them should understand that this is a stupid ass plan and it only ends up working for two reasons. One, Spock tells everybody, no, she has to die, which in some ways, you know, Spock's a little, <laughs> and Spock's like, I really want her to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you kind of get this feeling that Spock really wants to see his sister, uh, sister-in-law, whatever, half-sister, whatever you want to call her, adopted sister. Uh, he really wants to see her die. Um, he holds everybody at, at uh, phaser point, you know, so um, that was kind of unique. That was kind of interesting. So it has to work. She has to die. And then, of course, the Rain Angel appears. They trap the Red Angel in their Ghostbuster trap. And lo and behold, the person who pops out in the last five seconds of the episode is not Michael Burnham. It is Michael Burnham's mother. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Cliffhanger. Disappointing. Yeah. yeah. What that tells us is there's more than one person in that suit. Because at some point, Michael Burnham had to be in that suit or the biosignatures wouldn't match. My biosignature does not match my father's uh, biosignature, even though he is Dennis Riker. OK, and it doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't match my mother's either. Yeah. All right. So it right. can't there can't there has to be a time when there's multiple people in the suit. They have put so many holes in their own effing story at this point. It's irritating. Well, I mean, Michael, future Michael has this this uh, time traveling technology. Um, and she's got no qualms about going back in time and changing the past. She obviously went back and saved her parents from being killed. Yeah. And whether she just plucked them out of time and, and brought them to the future and history still records them as being lost, but now they're living in the future. Um, I suppose when future Michael realized that present day Michael was in danger she knows i can't go back i know the plan they're going to try and capture me i have to send someone else mom you have to go this mm -hmm. way even if you get captured it, it it doesn't matter it's you i'm still here to use the other suit <laughs> to do whatever we've been doing keep doing right. what we're doing right I yeah i'm sure there's a i'm sure they've got some kind of you know well, they know what happens, right? They're in the future. So they know what happens at this point, and they can plan around it. And that was probably their plan, to send her back instead of uh, her mother back instead of her herself. But then again, I don't know. It's it's a mess at this point. I, it's a total I don't, mess. I don't think they're going to fix it. No, I, I don't think they are. are. I think they're <laughs> no, just going to say they're not. it's the mom, and that's it. And you're none of this. No. Oh, Michael's also time trip. No. Because nope. there's multiple timelines. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. it. It's Michael's. It's Michael's dead mom time traveling. Yep. And that's and all it is. And you can't tell me at this point, right? You've made this. You've made Michael Burnham's story so tangled and so huge to the Federation and so huge to all these other characters involved. 
mm -hmm. that you can't tell me that the reason why there's no reference to her in the original series is simply because Spock hated her, right? I mean, she is so integral into the Federation and everything that's going on at this point, whether it be from the Klingon War to now this future war with the AI that she's involved in. Oh, now her parents are the ones who invented time travel, basically, with a time crystal that we mm -hmm. got from the set of the Dark <laughs> Crystal with all the Muppets in 1982, right? So uh, That's where they got it. That's where they got it. They got it from that movie set, right? So, I mean, we're adding a little bit of, of uh, magic into the show at this point. Uh, magic did is did real. I not warn you people about Kurtzman? I know. Magic, <laughs> yeah. blood, and mysteries of the mind. Um, yeah. Now we've got magic crystals, right? So yeah. um, next we're going to have uh, Unobtainium show up on the ship. Um they're going to go to Pandora and meet the Nauvoo or whatever they're called. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. They've made they just they've made her character so integral into everything, and she's involved in everything. And the entire show is about her, and the entire episodes about or series is about her. We get that, but now the 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 future of the Federation and time itself and what timeline we're in is all about her as well. So, uh, Arium's comment from last week, you know, it's all about you. It's always been about you, right? is now very prescient into this episode. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just picturing Jan from the Brady Bunch going, Michael, Michael, Michael. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. which, I mean, on some level it's okay because she is the main character. That's what this series is about. She's not right. the captain. And the whole show is about, she's the main character. I get that. So it has, okay. things have to revolve around her in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. But at this level and this magnitude, and then for reference to her being dropped from here on out, like, the fact that they've picked a new character like that and dropped it in before everything is just causing so many problems. Oh, yeah. And it will. It, and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Uh, I, I bet by season three or four, we'll be like, well, this doesn't fit in anywhere. It's, you know, no. it's. It gets back to my previous point. This this is a different timeline. They're never yeah. going to tell us it's a different timeline, but it is. It will be. Until it they reboot the original series and make a, a show. I'm okay with that. Me too. I'm okay with all of that. Yeah. Um, and maybe they'll tell... You know, when they when they said uh, way back at the beginning of, of season one, when they said, no, 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 this all fits. Everything fits. It'll all become clear. You'll understand. You know, <laughs> either that's going to happen one of two ways because they had a plan. Clearly, they got a plan moving through this whole thing, right? I mean, they have mm -hmm. a, they have an outline that they're following for however many series they hoped to get and how they're going to resolve this arc, right? With Michael Burnham, um, it, it they really it's a different timeline. It has it has to be a different timeline. I, I'm just going to stand by that until I sound like the neurotic guy. But anyway. Um, <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be like what Agents of Shields was when uh, Marvel first brought it out, and they had the whole it's all connected, it's all what part of the right. universe, and then towards the end they've just went, just enjoy the show. We don't care, enjoy the show, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> That's what's gonna happen, and you yeah. know what? Honestly, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with yeah, that. It's okay. It's okay. I just wish they would say it. Acknowledge it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and the the way that they'll acknowledge it is when they get down into whatever many seasons we have with this show. For I'm assuming at this point we'll probably at the very least get four. They already renewed renewed three. At the end of this one, people start watching next year for three. I'm assuming we'll get four. I bet we get five, ends. and that's it. Yeah, I, I can't see this show going seven, eight years. No. From the standpoint of we've already got a section 31 that they're going to do at some point. They've got these two other episodes. <laughs> They've got the two cartoons they're throwing in. Now you got uh, Picard you're throwing in. How do you remember the whole the uh, um, con miniseries they wanted to do? Yeah, yeah. You still haven't heard that in forever? No. No, no, I don't think they're doing that. I think they've kind of just dropped that and said, no. Nah, well, they wrote the scripts. Yeah, they wrote the scripts for it. Um, and it was supposed to be mean like anything, a mini series. But... No, it doesn't mean anything. It was supposed to be like a mini series. But I think at this point they've dropped it because with where they're at with this show, yeah. they could very easily reboot the original series yeah. and have I mean, it be there's our continuity. Yeah. It's in a different timeline. And here's <laughs> here it is yet again. We're going to reboot the, uh, the original series, even though we just did that with the JJ uh, universe. So we would have the Prime timeline, the Kelvin timeline, and what, the CBS timeline? No, it's the Burnham timeline. I'm, I'm going to go CBS because we got to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, I don't want to use yeah. Burnham's name either, but but that's yeah. what it is. We're in the Burnham timeline. We're in the right. Burnham era. I'm going to start calling her Mike. Mike. Mikey. Mikey. Mike. Yeah. Mike Burnham. Mikey did it. 
it's a mic it's a mic timeline yeah exactly. i don't know it was a well, good episode so what do you guys think for the next it, episode but do what what do you think for the next episode what do you think burnham's mom's gonna say i don't know because the trailer they played for the next episode um didn't show her they showed the mom for like a half second hmm um, how, how many do we have left? Like four. Four, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So somehow so we gotta start answering some questions. Well, well, no, they don't. They can answer all the questions in the very last episode and, and answer them the first twenty minutes, and then have everybody be soppy and sad as they leave and go their separate ways, just like uh, last season. That's you know? true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Good point. I mean, you know, um, <clears throat> but they have way too much to wrap up in four episodes. Yeah. Well, I guess that's not true. You've got enough time to wrap it all up in four episodes, but they won't. We'll see. They didn't. They did show the Klingons are coming back next episode. Yeah, yep. so that's cool. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, are they coming back, or are those flashbacks to um, <laughs> when Mike's mom and dad uh, perished? Good point. Who knows? Good point. Yeah. Yeah, I called her Mike. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. That's fine. Okay. I'm fine with it. I don't know. It was a good episode <laughs> overall. We got at least a little bit moving forward on the whole Red Angel thing. I'm surprised that they've, uh, you know, gotten to the point where here is one of the Red Angels anyway. At least that's my speculation that there's more than one. It is Michael Burnham and it's her mother. And I want to say that her father is still alive, too, and involved somehow in the future because he's the guy on the other end of the stick for one of the two of them when they go through to be able to bring him back. That rubber band theory, you know, snap him back into their... There's got to be someone on the other end of that con uh, control, I would think. Um, yeah, I would think that's so, how, too. That's how my guess is, anyway, that the dad's at the controls and the, the girls are in the suits for some stupid-ass reason. But mm -hmm. um, and it's the two of them doing it, um, tag-teaming somehow. But uh, I don't know. It was a good episode. It had, yeah. it had some major holes, some new issues with, with the whole storyline. But maybe they'll solve them somehow. But I'm kind of with you, uh, Daniel. I don't think they will. No, they won't. No, they'll just leave it hanging Ever out. forward. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Dan, what did you think? Eh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, you know, I really like when uh, Gordon shut off the holodeck and he fell out of bed <laughs> onto the floor. I thought that, that was, was really cool. <laughs> Um, oh, oh, we're talking about Discovery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say, you guys would love Shazam. Go do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, I hate to poo-poo on Discovery. Because, you know, it's great to live in a time where we have new Star Trek on the air and so much new Star Trek on the horizon. But it really, watching the show really feels more like homework for me. Yeah, I feel like you know. All right, oh, <laughs> podcast is tomorrow. I gotta watch. I gotta watch Discovery. I gotta find an hour to sit down and watch Discovery. And you know, I'm not watching it twice to prepare for the show. I'm watching it once mm -hmm. to just kind of be here for the show. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They got four more episodes to win me back. We'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, I don't hate it. I, you know, I really enjoyed the Saru stuff this season. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I did like the Poppy thing. That cracked me up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah. That yeah. was good. Yeah. It is one thing that they do really well on this show all the way through. The characters that we do get to know anyway and the development of those characters, they have those characters act and react kind of like normal people would. Yeah. You know, we've talked about this before, but that was a very, like, honest moment. That wasn't a dialogue moment. We wrote this. It almost felt like more of a, oh, what'd you just call me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was a very, uh, very normal conversation there between him and uh, an, an evil empress. But anyway. Yeah. And then, of course, w when she walks out, Tilly's little mm -hmm. reaction of, what just happened? I mean, you know, <laughs> Tilly continues to be... Uh, a fantastic character on the episode on all the yeah, shows so for sure she's the female barkley so <clears throat> yeah well i guess but that we'll wraps see. it up i guess so yeah we kind yeah. of went through that pretty fast but hey yeah. you know a lot happened without a lot happening you know it was a very quick 
very fast paced uh, show. Just boom, boom, boom. Here it is. And, uh, mm-hmm. and there we go. Now we saw the red angel at the end of it. So mm-hmm. that was good. That was good. good. For next week, we'll see what happens. Maybe the Klingons are back. Maybe they're back in a flashback. Uh, we'll find out in a week. In the yeah. meantime, give us your feedback, ladies and gentlemen. You can email us at trekcasttng at gmail.com. You can tell me how wrong I was about the Orville and how it was a great episode at chatiswrong at gmail.com. Fight me on that one. That's fine. I could be wrong. Uh, and then, of course, you can always follow us in the group. If you are not a member of the Facebook group, you're missing about half the show, honestly. Uh, some of the mm-hmm. references we make and some of the things yeah. we go back and forth really come from the Facebook group. Um, not a must, but, you know, it probably enhance your uh, listening to the show if you're not a member of the group. And vice versa, if you're in the group and not listening to me talk right now, then uh, whatever. So yeah. um, <laughs> that's okay, too. And then, of course, over on Instagram and on Twitter, at TrekCastTNG. Follow us in both locations. Uh, Daniel always puts up the uh, the funniest memes over on the Instagram page. And uh, I don't talk so much on Twitter, so I don't know what to tell you there. <laughs> 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 so uh, but that's it. That's the show. Anything else, gentlemen, before you uh, sign off? No, no, I think that's it. Well, there you have it. Another episode in the can. Check us out at trekcast.com. Also, if you would, please subscribe to us via iTunes. Leave those reviews. Subscribe to us. We'll get some numbers. Get up the list. Get more listeners. Do more shows. Have more fun. But for now, we're all done. So live long and prosper, and we'll see you next week.